Welcome to the Bay Bennett Mystery Movie. Tonight's episode, Double Indemnity. Hmm. If I was a bugle, I'd blow Reveille. Look alive, you two. Morning, Miss Bennett. Morning, Shorty. What do you know, Charlie? You look swell, babe. I can eat you with gravy. A little early for that, isn't it? Why don't you just stick a bagel up my nose and call me breakfast? <laughs> it's a start. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Shorty? Not so sweet and nothing, Miss Bennett. Sure, it's hard to find a fella these days. No, it ain't. Why, I've had plenty of fellas. Yeah, you've had love. Well, plenty of fellas. Sure, true love. You can't have love and be the number one dick in this town, kid. You've had true love, Miss Bennett. Real love. Plenty of love. Oh, you've had love, but love got away, didn't it, babe, huh? Love got away. Shut up, Shorty. Yeah, love got away. I called the taxi, I guess. Yeah, bottom of you, too. <sighs> yeah, I've had love. First time I had love. It only stayed long enough to take my pulse and check my throat and take a culture, I guess, and send it to the lab. Came back negative, but I don't know. I still felt like a little soreness in my throat. The only other time was one day when love was at the pool. He blew his silver whistle and shouted, Everyone out of the pool! He had a pool. The pools of my brown eyes where I'd held him for 40 family swim minutes while the chlorine murmured summer. And the wind whispered, I don't know, I'm not a wind interpreter. Say hello when you answer that, Charlie. Hello? Yeah? Yeah? Okay, we'll be right over there. They found a floater, babe. Yeah, some broad that was done in six ways from Sunday. They just dumped her into the East River. <gasps> a floater? I bet she's not as bloated as I am today. What do you got, Charlie? Oh, well, they said something about a gun, a knife, a strangulation, and you. Me? Why, I've never killed anyone in my life. And if I were going to, it would be in self-defense. A kill or be killed situation. Speaking of which, I'm driving. Come on. No pictures. Come on, come on. Yeah, it is. Try and drink. What's the skinny on the floater, Toots? False alarm, babe. What? Make yourself scarce. What do you mean? See for yourself. <laughs> By the looks of things, babe, she didn't know her attacker. She looks surprised, all right. She looks just like me. If I was singing Oklahoma, I mean. <laughs> she looks like she was an all right kid, too. Easy, Charlie. Uh, Spring a leak over a piece of rubber. Looks like somebody gave a mouth to mouth with a leaf blower. And take a look at what's around her neck. That's a belt from a dressing gown. How did you know? Because I picked it out. Babe, did you kill your dummy self? Don't be silly, you big lug. I bought that dressing gown for Boston Hollandaise. Boston Hollandaise? Hollandaise? But he's six feet under. This is a lot of hooey. I want an autopsy. Oh, Miss Bennett. Don't butt me. I want to know where she shot, who her friends were, who was with her, and what she ate for her last meal. The dummies don't eat nothing, Miss Bennett. Wax fruit, maybe, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for a walk. But who want to ice you anyway, Miss I Bennett? I need to go. Thank you, babe. But Miss Bennett, come on. Babe, you only want to go. There was something about seeing myself shot, stabbed, and drowned that bothered me. Was it some kind of dry run for my murder? A rehearsal without costumes, a, a criminal cue to cue. There's an old expression in the theater. Bad dress rehearsal, great opening night. This was one production I was looking forward to missing. How did the late Boston Hollandaise fit into all of this? How could my one-time lover and arch nemesis come back from the dead? How could a stiff commit a phony murder? There was only one place I could go for an answer.
Miss Bennett is here to see you, Mr. Hollandaise. <laughs> well, Boston Hollandaise. <laughs> Baby Bennett, I knew that you would make your way here eventually. I was just going to spank the doggy. You see, he's been a very, very bad little doggy. Uh-huh. Won't you come in? Sure, I'll come in, and we can get nice and cozy, and you can tell me all about how you 86 that dummy, and how you survived that skinny dip in the molten lava. So many questions. Can we get you a drink? You know what I like. What? No cherry? <laughs> you haven't changed a bit. And you look pretty good for a guy who fell in a volcano ten years ago tonight. Oh, uh, yes. My unfortunate accident. But thankfully, I was rescued and nursed back to health by my beautiful swimsuit model wife. Hello, Miss Bennett. Shorty! Not Shorty. Barbara. Barbara Hollandaise. But you're... Short? Yeah. 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 Well, Boston and I were in hiding. I went to a clinic in Sweden where a team of quacks shrunk me and gave me a new set of fingerprints. So you see, I can begin a new career in crime. And with Boston by my side, there's no one who can stop us. Not so fast, Bab. What about Boston? Every cop in this town would recognize him in a New York minute. Oh, would they indeed? You see, babe, I too was completely reconstructed in Sweden. And I'm now free to kill you and walk away unnoticed. You see, no one would suspect a dead man. I knew it was a gun in your pocket. You've never been that happy to see me. Except for that time in Barcelona. Kill her! I've waited a long time for this, babe. You don't want to kill me now, Boston. Not with this whole dump crawling with cops. Hey! Drop the gun! Take him away, boys. The jig's up. You haven't seen the last of me, babe, Bennett. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Tell it to Ripley. Stop it. How did you get in here? Boston! What a night. I just wanted to put my feet up and forget about Boston and the Hollandaise. But I couldn't because I was driving, so I just kept them on the pedals till I got home. I wanted to forget about Babs and a look like dummy who by now was probably deflating under some rookie flatfoot. The whole thing turned me sour on murder. My thoughts drifted to a young officer I'd met the week before. He was a do-right cop with an arresting manner. He drove up beside me and said, pull over, lady. I wasn't speeding, but I was guilty, all right. Guilty of turning the head of a family man. Guilty of being too darn hot to drive down Fifth Avenue with the top down in a sleek sedan. Come away with me, babe, he said. I declined. Now I wondered if I had done the right thing. I wondered if the opportunity would ever come again. Well, what do you know?